Well, hello everyone. Hi. Hi, we're back to our weekly show where nutritious meets delicious. And <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about what we promised you, the six different ways to make cauliflower. Chef Andrew is going to be going through those recipes and I'm going to be telling you about the benefits of cauliflower as we move through everything. So you want to start? Absolutely. Like Kate said, my beautiful wife, Nutrition's Extraordinaire, Kay Spears. <laughs> I'm Chef Andrew Paparella. So today we're going to talk about the power of cauliflower as I go through six different recipes about how to make it delicious and fun. Kay along the way is going to tell you about why you should be eating a lot of cauliflower. So yeah. we're going to start with our favorite meal of the day, brunch. Oh, right? Yeah. Yes. Definitely okay. favorite. And so and for any of you from any part of the southeastern region of the United States, we're going to start with shrimp and grits. Grits, okay? So grits originally is made out of ground hominy, which is puffed corn, okay? Corn, not as popular with sugar content. Um, genetically modified, not so good for the body. Right, so we're gonna make this shrimp and grits. We're gonna make cauliflower grits. Now you've seen on TV and you've seen in the store now, everybody's doing this cauliflower rice, okay? So the way you do cauliflower rice uh, is you take a head of cauliflower, break it up, put it in your food processor, pulse a couple of times, and you've got these little nuggets that we're calling cauliflower rice. Take those nuggets, keep pulsing until it looks like cauliflower snow. Okay, so now we're going to use those as cauliflower grits. So if you want to follow me over to the uh, stove top, I'll show you what we're going to do. All right, so for your traditional shrimp and grits, we start with water and butter and grits. And the traditional ratio is from three parts water, three to four parts water to one part grits. Stir constantly for about 15 minutes. Well, this being cauliflower, it's not going to be take as long to cook because it's already soft. So we're going to start with uh, equal parts here. One cup of homemade vegetable stock, a half a stick of butter, because all those good fats are good for the brain, right, Kay? Yes. Oh, and by the way, anytime we say butter, we mean Kerrygold grass-fed butter from Ireland. It is the absolute best brain power butter that you can get. So butter into our vegetable stock. A little bit of salt and pepper and on the salt level okay our salt is our salt is sea salt typically himalayan pink salt which has all the mineral benefits for it for our cells we do not use table salt no or kosher salt because kosher salt is steamed i did not know that well you just taught me something new all right so <laughs> we we basically have our our uh, liquid here vegetable stock butter salt pepper this is what I was talking about. This is our cauliflower snow or our cauliflower grits. Unlike traditional grits, you don't have to stir as they go in because they're not going to clump because they're not dry. They're fresh. So we're just going to stir and stir and stir. It's going to take about maybe 8 to 10 minutes. All right, so we've got our grits, which is uh, what we talked about. Uh, grated cauliflower, some vegetable socks, some butter. Now at this point you can add whatever you want. You can add some cheese, you can add some cream, you can add some sour cream, you can add some spices, you can add some herbs, whatever you like. But we're just going to go with regular butter and salt and pepper right now. Go ahead and get My favorite. Mm -hmm. And just to give you some uh, nutrition benefits for cauliflower, rich in vitamins and minerals, magnesium, which if you were stranded on, one, on an island and you could take one supplement with you, it would be magnesium. It's needed for every enzymatic function in the body. It also has vitamin K, vitamin C, all the antioxidants, which we're going to talk about later, but tons of vitamins that are in cauliflower. Also, it's considered a cruciferous vegetable, meaning that it helps with detoxification and fights cancer. And by the way, the shrimp and, shrimp and grits are my favorite brunch thing. Mm. I could have that every Sunday. So we're going to go ahead and top it off with some uh, chili butter sauteed gulf shrimp. Oh, yummy. And there you have it, shrimp and grits. Yay, do I get to taste that? Yep. <laughs> taste away. All right. Oh, that looks delish. Mmm. May I? Yes, you may. This is why you're delicious, honey, and I'm nutritious. You're not missing. It's got the texture. It's got the flavor. It's got... You can't tell the difference between this and regular hominy grits. 
then, but this, just the nutritional benefits that you're getting out of this, uh, they cook faster, they last longer, they don't get clumpy. Uh, well, my grandmother's from the South, and she used to make grits every Sunday, so that was a staple in our Sunday brunch. And so when my husband told me that he could make cauliflower grits, it was on. And I'm telling you, they are really good. Good Perfect. job. On to our next dish. <laughs> All right, so for one more uh, brunch dish, it doesn't have to be brunch, but the best way to get your kids to eat their vegetables is don't tell them that they're eating their vegetables. So yes. what we've done here is we made cauliflower gravy. And you can take pan drippings from chicken or beef or pork, add a little bit of butter, uh, add a uh, gluten-free flour if you want, heavy cream, and a head of cauliflower. Let it simmer until the cauliflower is nice and soft. If you're a vegan vegetarian, just leave the pan drippings out and go with the butter or some olive oil, a little bit of gluten-free flour as your thickener. Just go ahead and make a regular pan gravy, uh, heavy cream, salt, pepper, and a head of cauliflower or as much cauliflower as you want to thicken your gravy. So if you want to take a look right here, we've got some cauliflower, some cream. Uh, that looks good. Yeah. Yes. So Rose said, now... Wait, I want to tell them about the secret that you're about to show them okay. because this is the mistake before Chef Andrew in my life I used to make. I would try to take this hot ingredients and put it into the blender and it was never a fun experience. So tell them how we do that now. Right, so if you take a hot liquid and you put it in a blender and you let it sit, well the heat is is captured down here at the bottom. So as soon as you uh, turn it on, it blows up like Mount Etna or Vesuvius. So the way to do it is to start your blender first, pour the hot liquid in. Now you would, common sense would tell you it's gonna blow up all over the kitchen, but as it hits the bottom of the blender, it's going to dissipate the heat instantly as to not shoot it right out of your blender. So kind of scary at first. Taste? Oh yeah. Mmm. Delish. That is good. Creamy. You can't tell there's cauliflower in there. Cauliflower is basically your thickener in this gravy. So make a regular gravy like you normally do instead of using maybe a roux or a flour as your thickener. Throw a couple of uh, florets of cauliflower in there. Uh, whether they're, if they're not cooked, let them cook in the sauce. It, excuse me. If they are cooked, just throw them right in and use that. And you can just kind of gauge however thick you want your gravy, just add more cauliflower. All right. All right, so now we're going to be talking about our cauliflower mushroom risotto. So I know your passion is Italian. Absolutely. And I've always loved risotto, but I've never been able to, to enjoy it um, without the guilt. And so now you're going to show us a way where we can do this with cauliflower, and I love this recipe. Absolutely. So... Traditional risotto is made with arborio rice, which is a white rice, uh, it's polished rice, uh, and you can not really make risotto with anything other than that because of the starch content of the rice. You can try it, but it just, it's not the same. And so we're just going to go really not the same, and we're going to, to uh, the cauliflower rice that I showed you earlier, that you take a whole head of cauliflower and you pulse it in the machine until you get rice-sized kernels, or you can buy it in the freezer section now, you can buy it in the produce section now, it's one of the hottest. Uh, versions of cauliflower yes. on the market now. There's like umpteen different aisles of cauliflower rice and anyway we're going to show you what to do with it when you buy it. So come with me. Okay so your basic risotto right? We're going to go with about a tablespoon of olive oil. we go with some uh, diced onion. About one clove of chopped garlic. We have about a cup of local organic wild mushrooms. Okay, you want to tell them about local organic wild mushrooms while I uh, stir this up a little bit? Well, I was going to tell them about mushrooms and cauliflower, that they both have uh, a sulfur component in them that prevents cancer. So the two of these together is even more powerful. And then if on top of that, if you add a little bit of, if you add a little bit of curcumin from turmeric, then that's another cancer fighter. So the three of those together are powerful. All right. So in the pot here, we have onions, garlic, mushrooms. And we're just sauteing in some olive oil to get everything a little bit on the soft side. Now, in a traditional risotto, you would cook these and then you would 
add the rice and then you would saute some more to, to brown the rice and you would feed the stock over about 20-25 minutes so the starches come out of the rice, they get into the broth, it makes it nice and the perfect thickness that you're looking for. But because we're not using a grain and we are using a vegetable, this is going to work a lot faster. So kind of like the grits, you get just as good of a product at about a third of the time. So our mushrooms. And to answer a question, uh, I sliced the mushrooms really thin because the cauliflower is going to cook kind of quickly and we don't want oatmeal by the time our mushrooms are finally cooked. So the mushrooms and the onions and the garlic are pretty much sauteed. We're going to add our cauliflower rice. And you're going to want to cook, the, uh, cook and brown the cauliflower a little bit. Now one of the culinary matters of cauliflower is that when you toast it, roast it, saute it, it gets this really unctuous, nutty, roasted flavor to it. So eating cauliflower raw, it's like eating a bar of soap. But once you get the natural flavors out of cauliflower, then you just you can't beat it. And so that's what our goal is today, to show you all the different ways to do that. So we're going to get some, uh, some brown here on our cauliflower. And then at this point right here, if you like, if you're tempted, give it about a quarter cup of white wine. Let the white wine kind of cook away, and then we'll add our uh, homemade vegetable stock. Now we're going to add this about a half a cup at a time. Because we don't want to overcook it, and we don't want to drown it. So we want to cook it till it's just about how we like it. A little bit of salt and pepper. And one more thing about how we like it, folks. Cooking is about love. It's not about chemistry. Baking is about chemistry. But cooking is about finding that perfect balance for your palate about what you like. So what you think is your best dish and somebody else thinks that's their best dish, you know what, congratulations to you both. You both got great dishes. And so therefore, everything in the kitchen is a little bit of a pinch of salt and a taste. All right, so we've got this now to a point where we've got a risotto-like consistency. Our liquid is mostly gone. And now for the finishing touch, a really good Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese. This is the glue, hashtag the love, to risotto. If you don't have a good cheese, then you might as well just pour it down the drain because the cheese is the magic that makes risotto happen. Yes, it's partly the rice, and yes, it's partly whatever you put in it, whether it's black truffles or white truffle oil or anything else, but the cheese is really the love and the glue that puts a risotto together. I'm needing all of that tonight. So well, maybe I'll share. Oh, good. Yeah, maybe I'll get it. <laughs> all right. So we've got our Parmesan cheese mixed in, and oh, yummy! That looks great. So just one more thing about um, cancer, since we're talking about mushrooms and cauliflower together. That is Cancer Awareness Month. That's right. Breast cancer. So uh, cauliflower has something in it called indol three carbonyl. And what that means, it's a very powerful component that help, helps metabolize bad estrogens out of the body. So when we store these estrogens from plastics, from uh, pesticides, from all of these things we breathe and we eat, um, it creates these bad estrogens. We have different estrogens in our body, and these bad estrogens actually cause cancer. And so this nice cruciferous vegetable here, cauliflower, helps us get those bad estrogens out of our body and help us helps us metabolize them. Are you giving me a bite? I was. I, <laughs> I, I was being polite and waiting. Would you like to have the first one? I would love to. Careful, it's hot. Mmm. Mmm. That is great. You can't even tell the difference. I love that. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. Almost like I knew what I was doing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Anyway, folks, the whole point here is to take a classic dish, take a traditional dish, take out the, the, the carbohydrates that are bad, take out the, the, the GMOs, and, and replace it with really good healthy stuff like cauliflower. Cauliflower is extremely versatile. You can do a lot with it. Uh, we're going to join you next week for the Power of Cauliflower Part 2. So um, make sure that we subscribe subscribe to our youtube video please so that you will get our weekly uh, youtube video updates on our shows and catch us next week as we save, save the, the world, world one bite at a time, time.